What's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back on our video. This one's going to be about seven signs God is preparing you for leadership to be a leader. Uh, and man, this number, y'all know when I make my whiteboard videos, it's never in order, but number one, I have to make this number one. I had to. Okay, the number one is all your worldly plans are going to fail. Oh, man, some of you guys can relate to this. There's so many plans I had when I was in the world. You might get a little bit of success. But if it's not linked to God, to his kingdom, and, and winning souls over for his kingdom, it, it's you're never going to make it to that to level. But once you start doing things for God, you're going to start to see it. It's going it's, it's like to be quick. It's going to be with less effort, okay? And I'm telling you that so many times. Like my YouTube channel, okay? I, my YouTube channel has always been centered on God. It was mostly about like my, my testimonies. But the minute I started doing my whiteboard videos, just viral. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, God, I hear you. <laughs> I was like, God, I hear you. I hear you. And that's how I do it every day. And it's like, I'm like, dang, like, so this is my calling the whole entire time is to teach and preach. So guys, all you guys right now, maybe you guys want to be like a, um, maybe like a, a rapper. I know you can make kingdom music, but let's say like a worldly rapper or maybe you sisters, you are fine. You want to be a model. You want to do, be an actress or actor, whatever the case may be. If it's not linked towards God, and but God wants you to be a leader, he has, he has big plans for your life, for his kingdom, you're never going to prosper in this world. Okay, You're never going to gain that peace, that success in this world that compared to the peace that God has for you and the plans that God has for you. So always trust his plan. If you would have asked me, told me five years ago, Mark, you're going to be on YouTube with hundreds of thousands of subscribers and preaching, uh, preaching the, the Bible, preaching the kingdom of God, I would be like, how? I wouldn't believe it. But with God, all things are possible. And I finally, and when you find your calling with God, man, it's the biggest joy. It, it can never compare to the worldly success. It can never compare to what the world has to offer you, okay? So always understand this, guys. If God has you to, wants you to be a leader in his kingdom, and you're not fulfilling that, you're not going to find a rest for your soul. You're not going to find peace, okay? And God will purposely allow tribulation storms to happen because, you know, you're not being obedient to him. Okay, There comes a certain time, a certain age when when God is letting you know. God is showing you the signs, sign after sign after sign, and you ain't taking heed, okay? And then you wonder why your life is full of chaos. You know, you got to uh, submit to your calling, man. Okay, so... All your worldly plans, it's like, it's never, never works out. It never works out. Or even the relationships that are not meant to, for, for God, the friendships, it's just never going to work out. Okay. So, and that's the reason because it's not linked to God's kingdom. God has plans for your life and you just got to, you know, seek God's kingdom daily in his righteousness. And in due time, you're going to find what God has plans for you. Okay. Number two is obedience fully surrendered okay yes your obedience the bible says in romans chapter 5 verse 19 it says for by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so the obedience of one many shall be made righteous okay you have people who get on here and they get like a pharisee spirit and behind closed doors they're not living right so how can you make people obedient how can you make more people righteous for god when you're not living right you have to lead by example and when god is preparing you to be a leader you have to be fully surrendered okay you have to be fully surrendered you have to be living in obedience okay this is true power okay this is true power and this also when you're your obedience you're gonna you're gonna be on fire for god man a lot of people ask me you know mark how can i be on fire for god your obedience it's simple as that the bible is very very simple okay so you want to be on fire for god obedience you got to be fully surrendered no being lukewarm no being double-minded no uh, not choosing two masters because you could only serve one master okay so this is what it's all about man when god's calling you to be a leader you got to be obedient you got to practice what you preach and you don't you don't i'll be you don't be out here being a hypocrite and doing one thing and doing the opposite so you know and i'm gonna explain that a little bit more thing number five or six okay so yes obedience fully surrender to god okay all right number three is you have true faith that produces works, okay? You have true faith that produces works. You're not lazy and slothful. Fun, fun story, okay? So I was sleeping today, guys. I wanted to get an extra hour, or actually maybe hour or two to sleep. I don't know why I just woke up super tired, but I was like, nah, man, like we gotta work, bro. We gotta work, we gotta work. We gotta work for God. A lot of times we're, we're busy all, all day working for man. We don't even think about God and you know the souls that need to be saved. In these last days you have, they're pushing the LG, on the children, okay? So we and all this demonic stuff, all these demonic agendas being pushed out in the masses, in, in the matrix, in Satan's kingdom, and there's a lot of people in darkness that have no idea. So God is sending out his laborers, okay? His shepherds so, to preach the word so we can bring people to God's kingdom and all this darkness, all this sins that, all these sins that are corrupting people. So, you know, there's no time to be lazy. There's no time to be slothful and just, you know, live in your pleasure all day. Nah, man, there's no time for that, okay? So when God's calling to be a leader, 
here, it's, it's time to work. It's time to build. And if a man doesn't work, he shall not eat. Okay, there's no, there's, you're not going to make no more, no more excuses, which I'm going to speak out on that, which I think is number six. Okay, but yes, you have true. Uh, let me actually read this verse real quick for you guys. So this is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We all know chapter uh, verse 8. Verse 9, you know, we are saved by our faith, not by works. But no one reads verse 10. It says, and I'll leave a verse somewhere throughout the screen too, so you guys read along. It says, for, for uh, we are his works, uh, worksmanship created in Christ Jesus into good works, which God has ordained that we should walk therein. Okay, so God has created us. Uh, sorry, it says that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus into good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. OK, so our works are going to it's not being used to boastful, to be arrogant and be self-righteous and to be proudful like a Pharisee. No, we use this to boast Christ and preach Christ because only through him we're able to do what we're doing. Okay, Only through his spirit, the spirit of Christ. All right. Number four is you have become set apart and that requires separation. And through much is given, much is required. This is that in Luke chapter 12, verse 48, okay? So you have become set apart. You have become separated because um, the friend of the world is an enemy against God. So we can't be of the, when you're, when God's calling you to be a leader, you can't be of this world. And I know this, this might be hard for some of you guys to do because some people out there have a stronghold, not to, not just to doing like, um, you know, certain sins, but the stronghold could be your love of the world, the love of the world in you, and you care about what people think about you, okay? When it comes to being a leader, you have to be bold, okay? And the Bible says, the fear of God it is strong confidence. So when you get out of here, uh, maybe you're, you're out on the streets or you're out um, wherever you're out in the world, or maybe you're doing content on YouTube or TikTok, whatever, you're not afraid to look at the camera and speak the truth. You're not afraid of the, the people casting their stones, condemning you, judging you. You don't care, bro. You're bold as a lion, okay? So, you know, you have become set apart, and when God has put you in the isolation season, he separated you, okay? And you understand that much is given, much is required. So, like I said, no longer going to be lazy, no longer going to be slothful. You're fired up. Your obedience got you on fire for God, and you're what, you're ready to do whatever he has you uh, to do, okay? So, much is given, much is required. Remember that. When God has given you much, now he's going to require much of you, okay? So, no more being lazy. No more going back. No more backsliding. No more going back to what God has delivered you from. We're going straight and forward. We're moving straight and forward on a narrow path. Okay. Number five is not a slave to your sin, and so you're not a slave to your sin through discipline. Okay. In John, uh, John chapter eight verse thirty-four, Jesus says, "Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin." Ooh. Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. So. When you're a leader, okay, you can no longer be a slave to your sin. Now, I gotta make this very clear because all the leaders in the Bible, besides Christ, they all fell. David fell. He committed adultery. Uh, Moses, you know, he uh, murdered. Okay, um, Noah, Noah got drunk. Um, Samson, Samson fell to that wicked woman, to Delilah. Okay, so all the leaders in the Bible, they fell short of the glory of God. So I'm not out here preaching a holier than thou doctrine that you're never going to sin, but you're not going to be a slave to your sin. And when you do fall short, when you do, when you do make a mistake, when you do sin, you repent from it. Okay, you're not, we're not going to be a slave to it. We're not going to be like, oh, this is just who, who we are. No, we're, we're now in Christ Jesus. We're now born again. And we can easily overcome all sins because Christ overcame it all. Okay, so this is why a personal relationship with the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Okay, so you're not going to be a slave to your sin. Okay, and through your discipline, okay, you have discipline. Okay, you men out there, maybe you're on uh, no fap, you're on steamer attention. Okay, you're abstaining from your sexual lusts. Okay, you sisters out there, you're not on there on OnlyFans or, or or on social media showing off your body. Okay, because you have you know that your bodies are a temple of God, and we're not here going to be doing that type of stuff. Okay, so it's it's a discipline. And I know it might be hard because every time you go on social media, that's what you've seen, that's what you, that's being pushed on you, especially you brothers. We don't want to watch corn or none of that stuff. That's like all you go open social media, you go outside in the world, you see billboards, all the lust being promoted, but through your discipline, okay? You have the spirit of Christ in you that will overcome it all. All right. So not a slave to your sin, okay? And, and that's through your discipline, okay? Through your obedience. And so always keep that in mind. Number six is don't make excuses. You don't make excuses. And this is all signs of not just a, a, a leader to anything in life, a leader to a basketball team, a soccer team. This is a leader right here. You don't make a leader does not make excuses. OK, a leader holds himself uh, herself or herself accountable. OK, does not play victim. And also the fear of God. OK, remember, like I said earlier, the Bible, there's a Bible verse that says through strong confidence, uh, through, the, through the fear of God is strong confidence. OK, so someone who has a, who's a leader in God's kingdom 
has a fear of God in them. And it's sad because in today's age, not many people have the fear of God in them, okay? The fear of God is being afraid of, you know, committing to sin, okay? The fear of God is being out here and living like the devil because there's going to be a consequence of that, okay? So the fear of God is going to protect you, okay? Even it says in the Bible that whoever has a fear of God, angels protect them, okay? And yes, that's in Psalm 34. Like I said, I'll leave a verse off the screen, all right? So that's, that's the leader. You're not going to make excuses. You're not going to blame other people for your wrongdoings, okay? You're going to hold yourself accountable. You made a mistake. You sinned. Okay, all right, let me repent. Let me let me get, get do some prayer, maybe some fasting. Let me seek some mercy, okay? And um, also never blame the victim. And like I said, the, the, um, someone who is a leader in God's kingdom has a fear of God in them. Number seven is meekness, okay? You have a heart for God. I'm going to read this Bible verse for you guys real quick. This is in uh, Numbers chapter eight. Numbers chapter 12, verse 3 says, Now the man Moses was very meek above all which were uh, all men which are on the face of the earth. So Moses was the most humble person and God and out of all the people who are on the earth, and God picked him. And see, Moses had a stuttering problem. Moses had an issue uh, with, with his speech, and even God picked him. So you might not be perfect. You might not be the best speaker, the best, the best, um, you know, you may not be good with your grammar, but if you're humble. God can use you. If you have a heart for God, God, God can use you. So I hope you guys got edified for this video. These are the seven signs God's calling you to be a leader. If you haven't already, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share this video on all social media platforms for more content. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.